little sweaty. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Harry Potter mom. Harry Potter. What? It says it's recording. Yeah, I can move my hands near my face. In the corner, it says it's recording. Any thoughts on how to begin? <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Okay. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm Brittany. And this is Pixie Dust Productions. We've decided to get together every once in a while. Uh, the last Friday of every month, and talk about uh, one of the Disney original productions. Uh, we're going to go in order from the first original released Disney production all the way through, um, just one one movie at a time, talking about everything. We're going to start with Snow White, because that's the first movie that Disney released, and I don't know, I'm really excited about it. All right, let's dive in. Um, so first, prior to watching this for our podcast, you've seen this movie, correct? Yes, lots okay. and lots of times. So what were your uh, thoughts before viewing? Um, I was really excited to watch it again. Um, going through it, like with purpose, I guess, to actually like want to find details about it was kind of neat. Yeah, I agree. Um, this is one that I watched a lot growing up. Um, it was my favorite when I was a little girl. Snow White was my favorite princess when I was super little. Um, and I've watched it multiple times as an adult too. So I, I pretty much knew what I was getting into watching it this time around. But um, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Yeah, I've had like this weird tradition um, kind of pop up over the years where somehow, like not on purpose, I don't plan it. But for some reason, somehow I always end up watching Snow White Thanksgiving weekend. Oh, that's so random. I have no idea how it always happens. So oh, weird. That's cool, though. That's been kind so of So now cool it has to continue to happen, it right? It does. <laughs> yeah, I did it on purpose this year, but I think it started happening, like, maybe, like, 13 or 14 years ago that I started noticing it. That's really cool. Yeah. Okay, so should we talk about some of the characters then? Uh, yeah. I think one of the first ones to start with, obviously, is Snow White. Represent Snow White. <laughs> She's everything that I wish I was. <laughs> right? She's sweet. She's innocent. She's like the epitome of like purity and goodness. And I lack in those areas. <laughs> so right, I, she just cares so much. Right. Um. <laughs> yeah, no, I think it's really cool. Like one scene in particular that pops out um, is like when she runs away from the huntsman, you know, and she gets to the end of the creepy looking forest and she kind of like freaks out and then she looks at all the animals and apologizes. <laughs> like you just almost got killed and you just apologize to some animals for yeah. freaking out. Like you had a yeah. right to freak out. She's just so selfless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, should we sort her? Let's sort her. Okay. Do you want to explain sorting? So this, this is not really Disney related. Um, I actually took this idea from another podcast. It's called Fantastic Geeks and Where to Find Them, and I highly recommend it. Um, but Brittany and I are uh, huge Harry Potter fans, um, so if you guys are not, I'm sorry. You should be. <laughs> but, so we are going to sort these characters into their different Hogwarts houses. Um, and so Snow White, clearly a Slytherin. You're absolutely right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, no, she's the Snow Gryffindor is Gryffindor. Really? She's a Hufflepuff. What? Uh, I guess. I was just thinking she's just so noble. She's just like. She's such a puff. But I guess in the way that she's selfless, whereas like Gryffindors are more competitive. She, yeah, she, I, I feel like Gryffindors have more of like an agenda where she's just, she just wants to Yeah, look they have a goal. <laughs> she's just there like making everybody's day nicer right. just because, yeah. Yeah, she's totally a Hufflepuff. I win. Okay, you've won me over. She's a Hufflepuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, who else would you like to talk about? I would like to talk about the Queen. Okay, let's talk about the Queen. <laughs> she is the most vain character in existence. She literally wants to kill somebody for being prettier than her. <laughs> right. And That's like, I would like some Queen backstory, though, to be honest, because... Why does she have power over the kingdom again? You want queen backstory. I want magic mirror backstory. 
Why is that mirror magic? Did she trap somebody in there? Like it's her slave? Like I want, like, I want a whole movie of that. (laughs) Oh, Where did she get this? Where did she obtain this magic mirror? How is, how is that a thing? That's what I want to know. That is really good. But I think she was, she was married to Snow White's dad, right? Yeah. And yeah. Like, did he die? Like, I wasn't clear on that for some reason. I, don't know. I just always I mean, assumed he did, but I don't know if it's ever mentioned. He has to have, because where is he? Yeah. Like, how is this being allowed to happen? I don't know. I think we need to read the original fairy tale. We should do that. Maybe we should have done that. To just know that. But, um, but yeah, she is the exact opposite of what Snow White is. It is a, it is a perfectly cut contrast through yeah. that. Yeah. And a lot of times I will, I'll do a thing, like it drives Chris crazy, but, um, I will sympathize with like the villain and I'm like, but this happened to them. Like, no wonder they reacted this way. And like, I don't feel that way about her. She literally hates her just for being prettier than her. And Snow White's like 13 years old. Right. Like, how are you going to hate a kid? That's, it's disturbing. It is. Yeah. There's nothing, you can't relate to this queen she's just no so clearly uh we're gonna put her in slytherin right (laughs) we are only because we're trying to pick one at all this class is ridiculous i feel like even slytherins are more redeeming than her but she's she has the slytherin qualities is that she's and she has power like she is clearly a witch (laughs) i mean isn't everybody a witch in these houses (laughs) (laughs) But I mean, that's why she gets sorted at all, because obviously. Right, right. Otherwise, I'd be like, she sucks. She's not even a wizard. She's but a muggle. She totally is. Yeah. She's a muggle. <laughs> no, but she's okay. definitely magical. So, okay. Who is your favorite dwarf? I have never, ever picked a favorite dwarf. What? <laughs> like, I don't even know. So, I feel like most people have the same favorite dwarf. And he's not my favorite. But... I feel like Dopey is, like, so many people's favorite. He's he, like, super cute. He steals the show. Like, people love him. Yeah, just for being adorable. He's Yeah, he's very endearing. Um, There's been a lot of moments where, like, I've related to Grumpy. Grumpy is my favorite. So I could I see love picking him. Grumpy. But... <laughs> I love all the Grumpy know. characters in every movie, though. I don't know what it is. Like, I just, like... I would, I just want to hug them. I just want to be like, I love this too. I love you. <laughs> but yeah. Oh my goodness. Grumpy's, Grump, Grumpy's been my favorite since I was a little kid. So where does Grumpy go? You know what? I was thinking about this and I originally wanted to put him in Slytherin just because I feel like we automatically put the bad guys in Slytherin. But I think he's just a grumpy Gryffindor. I think he is too. I yeah. totally think he's a grumpy Gryffindor. He totally is. And one thing, though, that I notice as an adult that I never, it like went straight over my head as a kid is that he is extremely sexist. Yeah, he is. <laughs> like, what? You don't get that? <laughs> oh my goodness. Things that like wouldn't even fly by today's standards, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Funny. They wouldn't even put some of those lines in a Disney movie today. Nope. Um, but somehow it's charming and it's completely fine. It's just classic and timeless. And it's okay. He'll always be my favorite. I don't care. <laughs> All right, so is there any other characters you want to discuss? I don't feel like there's a whole lot to discuss about the prince. No. I do appreciate that he is, like, one of the fewer princes that sings in the movie. Uh, And his song. I know we haven't gotten to songs yet, but one song. I love that song. So Which one is it? One song. I'm like blanking. It's called One Song. Oh, I don't know the title. One song, any of them. I have but one song. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And she okay. like sings it a little bit too. She kind of like hums yeah, it yeah. Um, but yeah. And one thing that I do notice about the princes in these older movies is that they tend to be more like masculine and like whereas today the princes are kind of like pretty boys and it just kind of shows and they're like relatable goofballs rather than like savior types yeah i think it just shows like what we as a society like view as attractive now versus then yeah but um yeah it's that's totally true yeah i like that so should we continue to talk about music then? Yeah, let's just roll right into that. Okay, that cool. A good segue. I like that. 
So what uh, is your favorite song in Snow White? Um, I actually like constantly find myself on like probably a weekly basis. This is probably really embarrassing to admit, but like humming like whistle while you work. Oh, okay. like all the time. I'm like going through like the dishes, just like kind of like humming it to myself. <laughs> That's fun. Um, my favorite song is with a smile and a song. I love that song. Um, just because it's about staying positive and just smiling through the hard times, which is another I like that. I'm not good at, but clearly Snow White is. <laughs> She is. Snow White's awesome. Yeah, she really is. Um, and when I was a little kid, it was that hi-ho, hi-ho. Yes. Off to work we go. My sister and I would sing that all the time. Everywhere we went, like, hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to school we go, no matter where we went. We were I'm singing. not going to say I don't still do that. <laughs> so. <laughs> no judgment. Right. Um, the other thing, though, is there were some songs that were deleted from this movie, and I oh, would I didn't know about that. Those, yeah, um, I don't know them, but I would love to see those um, put into like a live action or a stage production. That would be super exciting for me. So speaking of live actions or stage productions, um, have you ever seen an alternate version of I Snow have not. White? Have you? I don't think I have. Like I, I realized there... the other day, I've seen several Cinderellas. I know there are several. And the, the story itself has been rewritten different ways several times. And so I know, I know there are different versions out there, but I think I've only seen Disney's version. Yeah, I don't think I've seen anything else. We should look into that. That would be interesting. Yeah, it would. Um, let's see. So the origin of the story, it, it was written by the Grimm brothers. Um, from my understanding, I've never read um, the Grimm Brothers story, but from my understanding, this is actually pretty close to it, as far as Disney goes, because okay. Disney takes these stories and makes them 100% different from what they started as. They and take this, a lot of liberties. Yes. This one um, actually stays pretty true to the story, and I believe that because it's kind of scary. It's a scary movie. It is, and like seriously, that forest scene... I love that so much. Oh the animation gosh. in there. It's, it's like, like my favorite part of the whole movie. It's so beautifully animated. It yeah. is. And I forgot, like, I forgot about it, actually, for some reason. Maybe I was, like, distracted or something with my kids or something when that part came on this past Thanksgiving. But this time I really noticed it. And I was like, that is so cool. I think it, it, it like, shows a good message, too. Like, sometimes the things that you're scared of aren't really that scary because yeah, she's seeing all these scary things, but then she like, when the light comes out, it's just like logs and animals and yep. it really wasn't anything to be afraid of. And she apologizes because she's so sweet. She's so sweet. <laughs> My cat's over here, sorry. Um, what else? Um, there are some differences I know from the original story and, and the um, movie. And like I said, I haven't read this, so I, I could have some of this stuff wrong. Um, this is off of memory from like other podcasts I've listened to because I'm a nerd like that. Uh, but I know I've, you I've just been told anyone who ever listens to this a nerd. I love it. I mean, <laughs> let's let's be real. Nobody's gonna listen to this. <laughs> that's true. It's true. And anyone, like our moms listens, might. Oh, that's true. My mom will. <laughs> yeah, my mom doesn't know about it right now, but. <laughs> anyone that doesn't anyone that like thinks it's stupid is not our target target audience anyways i love it <laughs> Sorry. i don't think you could listen to a conversation any conversation i have with any kind of interest and not be a nerd so <laughs> sorry I mean, not sorry i think it's an endearing term but sorry as you were saying okay so um so what i've heard is that the prince in the original book had never like previously met Snow White and he just sees her dead body in a casket and decides to plant one on her, which I'm kind of glad Disney changed that. I mean, at yeah, least they met once. Creepy. That happened with uh, Sleeping Beauty too, right? Well, I think something worse happened with Sleeping Beauty. Well, there. yeah, but I mean like there was no previous meeting like before. I, yeah, movie. I don't know. Probably. I think that I they, heard that somewhere. The original story tales are weird. Story tales, story tales, <laughs> story tales. <laughs> story tales. Um, 
What else? I have some notes here. Um, oh, um, I guess originally um, the queen did not say mirror, mirror on the wall. She said mirror, mirror in my hand. Who's the fairest in the land? Oh. And Disney changed that probably just to make it more theatrical, I assume. But yeah, because I mean, like you have like a little hand mirror and it's small, but you have this like large, grandiose wall mirror. Yes. It makes more of an impact, mirror. I think. I want that mirror in my house. I also I want, want that mirror. No I, want, <laughs> I want to own um, a replica of the box, the heart box. <laughs> Oh, that'd make a cool jewelry box or like a music box. Yes. I'm surprised Disney doesn't carry one, actually. Have you looked? I haven't. We need to look into it. We need to look at this. This would be really cool. Um, speaking of that box, I think it, in the original, she had the Huntsman bring back her lungs and her liver, I want to say. Yeah, it was two parts. It was two yeah. organs. And I guess heart just... I don't know. It just sounds better. I don't, why, why yeah, did they I think it? it's less gruesome somehow. Like it almost comes off more like poetic. Yeah. Since there's like, you know, like the phrase like, oh, like eat your heart out or like whatever. There's phrases like that. So they're like, it's socially acceptable to think about. But if you tell somebody like, oh, I'm going to rip out your liver and your lungs. Well, then. that's dark. That's very dark. It's like, that sounds a little more aggressive. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I guess that was a good change on Disney's part then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you have anything else to add? Uh, no. No, I have just a little bit of the history on um, the origin. I guess not so much history, but timeline. It was like in the 19th century that it was written. It goes under two titles. Um, tale number 53, which is eloquent and poetic as ever. And... Uh, I feel it. Also, I'm going to try to say the German title. Okay, and good if luck. If a German person watches this, I would love correction because it, it looks like Sneewitchen. Say it again. Sneewitchen. Okay. So hopefully it's pronounced how it looks because I think it's interesting to know what things were originally called. Yeah, I like that. Okay. You're braver than I am. I wouldn't have tried to announce <laughs> tried to pronounce it. I don't mind embarrassing myself mispronouncing things. Okay, so what should we discuss next? Do you have any of the, like the the sign behind the scenes facts? Because I don't have any. Um, do you know that Adriana Casalotti? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, she was only paid nine hundred and seventy dollars for working on this film, and she had signed a contract with Disney that would not allow her voice to be used anywhere else because. Um, they wanted Exclusive Snow White's voice. voice to be Snow White's voice. They didn't want to ruin the illusion of Snow White. So Okay. So she didn't do like pretty much any work after that, which is kind of a bummer. That is kind of a bummer yeah. for like under a grand, you stop working as a voice actor forever. I mean, you're Snow White forever. You're like immortal. You're immortalized. Snow White. Yeah. So I mean that's cool, but I uh, who I knew her? her? She was a cartoon face. True. Sad. Although a thousand bucks ish went further in 1937 than it does now. That's true. We'd have to look at how much that was, but she still never worked after that. I think she did um, Wizard of Oz, um, the part where the Tin Man um, is doing his song and you hear Juliet's voice. That's her. Um, oh. But other than that, not really anything. So that's, an, I guess, an interesting behind that is the scenes. an interesting fact. fact. I didn't know about that. I didn't know she was involved in uh, Wizard of Oz at all. Yeah, I love that movie too. Me Such a good too. one. It's my favorite. <laughs> and um, behind me, there's a uh, it says like there's no place like home on my sign there. Cute. I love it. So, um, post viewing thoughts. Um, a, sorry, go ahead. No, okay. Um, yeah, I was just gonna say it's just. I just love this movie. I just really do. The attention to detail and the artwork and the forest scene is just like absolutely delightful. I'm so excited about that. It's so beautifully animated and it took so much more to animate films than- oh, Back then it was so much more. And there's a lot of water in the film. And I don't know much about animation, but I've always been told water is like the hardest thing to animate. Oh. And, and 
they didn't, I mean, they could have cut so much of that out and they put so much water in that film. Yeah. Um, it's also the very first animated film ever. Like not just Disney. Oh, really? Ever. Yes. So I didn't know Disney, that. That's so neat. Disney had been doing like shorts, but, um, about Willie and other stuff. No, why it was literally the first full like length feature movie. film. Yes. And people told Walt he was crazy and that it was going to completely fail. And it ended up pretty much saving his company. So, um, and it's still so well loved. It's not like it's lost to, to any generation ever since. No, everyone knows who Snow White is. Yeah. And it, so without Snow White, like we might not have the Disney we know today. That I mean, it was literally the first animated film. So. Oh man, it's pretty crazy stuff. That is crazy. Do, so what would you say the lesson or the moral of the story is? It's kind of that classic "good always overcomes." Okay. Like, it, it might go bad for a while. I feel that. I kind of like that. And then, like, also, like, just the whole persona of Snow White. Just, you know, push out as much kindness as you possibly can. Despite your circumstance, despite what you're walking through, you can put out kindness. Yeah. And that's a struggle, I think, for most people. So that's a really good message to, to yeah. take away from it. Um I kind of went the opposite way when I was thinking about what the message was. And I put like being selfish and vain doesn't get you anywhere. Um, blowing out someone else's flame doesn't make yours burn any brighter. I kind of, I guess I kind of went the negative route, but. <laughs> <laughs> I had the you can, you had the you shouldn't. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Oh, I also did have one more fact that I forgot about. Okay. Uh, this film actually makes a cameo in that movie Gremlins from the 80s. Oh, does it? There's a theater scene in that movie, and Snow White is what's playing. Oh, very cool. Yeah. I've actually only seen that movie once. Is that I, sad? I think you've only seen it a couple of times. It's, not, okay. it's Gremlins. It's not that sad. Chris loves, like, all the stupid 80s movies. I'm sorry. I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm going to offend somebody I know. I love stupid 80s movies, so I totally get it. Goonies is easily in my top 10. Like, yeah. Like, movies of all time. I can't get on board. Like, I, every time he shows me one, I'm just like, eh, I don't know. See, that's Austin. He's just like, whatever. This is dumb. <laughs> he's like... He's like, it's not even a good quality film being, you know, like, he's not impressed with anything about it. Yeah. Well. But I'm just like, nostalgia. <laughs> nostalgia, you were, <laughs> for me, nostalgia is like 90s, but. But I grew up watching them, like, paralleled with each gotcha. other. I was watching them equally as frequently. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, did you watch this with anybody? Uh, yeah, actually, all my kids sat with me to watch it. Okay. How did Ina, they feel? Uh, they like this movie. They really do. Okay. Um, it was Ina's primary interest. She really likes this movie. Um, How old is she? She's four. Okay. She'll be five in a couple of months. Um, but yeah, she was like following me around all week. Mommy, when are we going to watch Snow White? Oh, good. Good. I watched with my four-year-old too. Um, oh, fun. She liked it. Um, one thing that I, I noticed, <laughs> I've never really thought it was that funny, but the scene where... Um, the dwarfs let Snow White sleep in their bed and they're all sleeping in random spots like cupboards and sinks and randomness. She thought that was the funniest thing ever. She oh looked so hard at it. I was just like, oh, this, this is funny, I guess. <laughs> it is. Um, and then I have two older boys that were like, we're way too cool. We're not watching Snow White. This is lame. And like halfway through the movie, they like moseyed on in and they were super into it, asking questions. So so it's oh, still that's fun. Today. Yeah, across all audiences. Right. That's fun. Um, so did you have a favorite line in the movie? I don't have anything. <laughs> I had one that particularly cracked me up for some reason when I was watching it. And I don't know that I ever noticed it before. Um, like you said, with some of Grumpy's like sexist comments. Right. <laughs> But it cracked me up when I was watching it. And it, he goes, females, they're all bad and full of wicked wilds. I'm like, what are wicked wilds? I love this expression. I'm totally using it. Just like stolen wicked on wilds. Our, <laughs> this is our vocabulary now on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I, don't, I mean, I so can't, nothing's my favorite mind for me, but yes, that's funny. 
Grumpy's just Grumpy's so awesome. He totally is. Then did you have any additional thoughts? I mean, it's just an enjoyable movie. If if you haven't seen it and you call yourself a Disney fan, see it and then call yourself a Disney fan. Um, yeah, I just, I highly recommend it. I thought it was a good movie. Oh, I do too. I just like it so much. Um, I actually, I'm sorry, I am disorganized, but I had three more thoughts. Okay, go share. ahead. One was before the queen got back to Snow White, um, when Snow White was just like, oh, cool, I just like blissfully exist with these dwarves now and everything's delightful. Um, I just thought it was interesting that she was making apple dumplings for them, like kind of like foreshadowing the apple a little bit there. Okay. Um, along with the foreshadowing of the apple, or not the foreshadowing, but just the apple in general. Um, yeah. I thought it was really interesting. Yeah, I love it so much. <laughs> I thought it was really interesting that the queen was like, take a bite and your wish will come true. Like, that is the oldest story of all time. Go back to Adam and Eve in the garden. What happened? Take a bite of the apple. Something awesome's going to happen that you want. I'm totally inspired by that. Like, 100%. seriously. And also when Snow White runs out of the forest and she like gets to the end and she like collapses or whatever, she like prays out loud. Like yes. You never see prayer you in do a not. modern day Disney movie. Oh my gosh. I love so, that so much. I love that too. And she prays for Grumpy. She prays for her hater. Like, yeah. who is she? Like, how do I become this? Right. When I grow up, I want to be Snow White. Right. Me too. Ultimately. And wow. also with the um, Harry Potter moss and Harry Potter. <laughs> Harry Potter Harry awesomeness. Potter. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed this, but when the queen turns into the hag, did you notice her fingers totally look like the Elder Wand? No, I need to rewatch it they now. Look like the Elder Wand, she's got like I, they're like bony and knobby, and they just I get like more it. narrow. <laughs> okay, you haven't seen Descendants, right? I have actually. We just oh. watched it like last month. We watched all three of them. My kids are in love. Oh my god. Okay, so these movies, if you guys haven't seen them, Disney Channel original movies, so super cheesy, ridiculous, badass. They're like the made-for-TV ones. Yeah, but so enjoyable at the same time. When she gets turned into that hag in Descendants 3, I die laughing every time when um, Carlos is like, when she says like, um, oh, there's no magic to, to change it back or whatever. He's all, well, that's a shame. <laughs> and I just <laughs> die laughing every time. <laughs> oh my goodness. I actually super enjoy um, Evie as a character in that movie. I know we're not discussing I that movie right now, Evie. but for anyone who doesn't know, she's the evil queen's daughter in this alternate fantasy reality of the Disney villain world. Mm -hmm. And, uh, She's just such a delightful character. She's I like her so much. So likable. And so is Doug. I like, like Doug. I have a crush on Doug. I love Doug. <laughs> uh, did you notice my necklace? Yes. Is that, that's the Descendants necklace, right? I made it. <laughs> you yeah. made it and you posted the details for it. Where? Shamelessly plugging you right now. <laughs> okay. You can find it on Instagram at second blog to the right. Um, but that's not what we're here for. <laughs> It's okay. It but yes, there. this is Evie. Yeah, I'm wearing Evie's necklace. Um, my sister so and I fun. made them together. It was a lot of fun. <laughs> so. so much fun. All right. So I am super excited that we started doing this. I think it's going to be really, really fun going on. Um, and speaking of going on, will you tell us about our next adventure? What's coming up next for us? So next month, we will be watching Pinocchio. That was the second Disney movie ever made. Um, and you Two can find animated in a row. Yes. Yes. So Snow White was a success. Um, so yes, that's going to be on, you can find that on Disney plus right now. So if you guys want to watch along with us. So when we discuss next month, you can join in on the conversation. Um, that'd be super awesome. Yep. That would be super great. I would love that. And that next video will air on the last Friday of February. That is February 28th, I believe. I believe you're correct. Okay. So don't that will be awesome. What? I said, don't quote me on it though. I'm pretty sure. 
I'll, I'll try to add like a graphic of a number if I was wrong, like correcting me or something right Sounds here. Sounds good. Let's see what I can do. All we right. also would like to um, add another segment in these uh, episodes in the future. We're, we're going to call it Magic Mail. So if you guys have any comments or questions, we want to be able to read them out loud and respond to them. So you can um, give us any of those comments and questions on Instagram. You can find us at pixiedust.productions. Um, you can also email us. Our email is pixiedustmailbox at gmail.com. And we also have a Facebook group, and that is called Pixie Dust Productions. Everything all good? Yep, everything's all good. Okay. You know, momming doesn't have set hours, so. You'll have to excuse us every once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I was just um, saying where they could um, send us questions and comments. Um, so oh, we perfect. Can start yeah, our yeah. magic mail in the future. <laughs> perfect. And also, I don't know if you talked about like the bonus content that will be at the end of next month's video. I did not. Why don't you tell them about it? So in the next month, we are both traveling to San Francisco, California to see the live stage production of A Cursed Child, which is the stage play spinoff of the Harry Potter series. That's a good it's description. It's technically like it part eight nine. of the story. Correct. 19 years after the last battle. After the Battle of Hogwarts. Correct. Um, so we're really excited to go see that. We're traveling um, Jessica from Arizona, and I'll be traveling from North Carolina. We're going to meet up there. We're going to have awesome adventures. We'll record some stuff together, like in person <laughs> together, um, including like taste testing the every flavor horrible jelly beans from so the wizarding world and a few other things um and we will tack that on to the end of the pinocchio video so you can see what our adventure in san francisco was like so definitely tune in for that i would love to connect with you guys and if you have anything that we should see or do while we're in san francisco send us that because we need yes. to know about it so that'd we can make be, our plans that'd be so awesome we are planning on also visiting the walt disney family museum Yes, so that will be I'm excited. super exciting. But yes, anything else, because we have no idea what we're getting into. Yeah, I've never been there before. So this will definitely be a new adventure for me. Same. All right. All right. Anything else? No, I think that's awesome. I'm really excited that we did this and it was super good talking with you about it. Cool. So I guess I'll see you next month. See you next time. <laughs> I exited out of the recording, but not out of the Zoom. That's fine. Um, actually, while well, you're still, it says we're recording still, by the way. Oh, I, I'm recording on a different separate software. Oh, also. got you. Okay. All right. So, um, I forgot what I was going to tell you. <laughs> Anyone that, like, thinks it's stupid is not our target audience anyways.